Now, now hang on. Um, horn, horn swaggler. Rattlesnake swindler. Kill Mind vomit. Now, 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 please calm down. There is no need for a violent crowd. I know some of you may be a little less than pleased with the results you got from Doc Ernest P. Schnickel's guaranteed patented miracle elixir. But I assure you, the side effects you're experiencing just mean that it's working. Yeah, a dog. Butch, Butch Woodson, uh, look at the beautiful, long, flowing locks of hair you have now. Hmm? And just think how beautiful they will be when they move from your nostrils to the top of your head. <laughs> And Felicity, oh, Felicity Colfax, look at you standing there so confident and strong, not a hint of a tremor, pointing that six shooter straight at me, even though you got hooves where your hands used to be. <laughs> now, Chisler, 
Yeah, now, hang on. Let's take a moment. Let's not do anything we are going to regret. Uh, uh, let, me, let me tell you a little story. Yeah, a story. Something that I think will, will clear all of this misunderstanding up and make everybody feel better. And if and it doesn't, I will refund every red cent and you will never see hide nor hair of Doc Ernest P. Schnickel again. Now, the story. What's the title of that story? Let me remember what it is. Um, uh, the title, the title. Uh, uh, the Pink Guitar, of course. How could I forget? <laughs> oh, well, this takes place out on the Kansas Prairie. There was a wagon train moving west with expectant, excited settlers just rolling across that flat prairie. Well, well baby, baby. Uh, I reckon we should start looking for a place to make our homestead. Yeah, I reckon that's true, Leroy. I, I'm so in love with the land here. It's so beautiful, <laughs> so different than from where we came from. Well, ain't it though? Well, well, look at that sky. It's like you're looking into forever. Wide open, wide open. Oh, Leroy, we're gonna have a wonderful family here. They couldn't believe how beautiful and bright that future was. And as that wagon train was moving along, they encountered a stranger who was sitting out by the, the side of a trail one day. Howdy, stranger. Well, if you come in in my direction, you the stranger. <laughs> he had a nice way of putting things. Yeah, you, you've got a good point there. Uh, well, hello there, uh, neighbor, then, since we're in the same vicinity. Uh, this is Leroy, my husband. <laughs> and I'm his wife. This is my wife. And your name? Well, my name, uh, I like to, to tell she people. She goes by Felicity. Felicity, but I like to tell people they can call me Fell. Well, pleasure to meet you, too. My name is Cornelius Walter. Cornelius. And they noticed strapped across Cornelius's back was the neck of a guitar. Is that a, a guitar on your back? Well, yes, it is. How about I play you something real quick? I always like to play some when I yeah. meet. Please do. If that ain't the darndest guitar playing I've ever, well, we could give you a ride in our wagon if you don't mind playing a little for us as we go along. Well, Cornelius was delighted because that's what he had in mind all along, you see. Well, isn't that something? Playing music while we're riding a wagon. <laughs> well, here, here, I'll help you in. Here, here give me your hand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There we and it go. was as they were pulling him up, they noticed the unusual color of Cornelius's guitar. I ain't never seen anything that color before in an instrument. It's the most beautiful thing ever. That's it. That's pink. That's pink. <laughs> That's right. Pink. Pink. <laughs> like the color of the sky when the sun goes down. Here we go. <sighs> Well, if you don't mind playing something, Cornelius, we sure appreciate it. It's so beautiful. Mm 
Leroy, honey. I ain't never heard anything like this in my life. I haven't either. I'm thinking when we get to where we're gonna settle down, we should ask Cornelius to play for the townsfolk. They would pay good money to hear that. I think so. I'm wondering, could Cornelius be from heaven with a pink guitar and all? Well, <laughs> well now, honey, let's not exaggerate. All right. Well, well, here's a small settlement. Let's stop here. What do you say, honey? Is this where we're going to settle down? Uh, well, let's see if the folk are, are friendly. Uh, oh, I think I think we should go to the next town. Oh, your wife just let. It, you probably shouldn't have tell your wife to leave so fast. We should probably wait for the. We're going to settle here. Him off. Oh. They were debating so much they didn't see the bandit that snuck up on them. Hand him all, hand him all goods and and, and coin you got. You Come can have on. everything. You can have everything except this guitar. Oh, I want that guitar. Get it off your back and give it to me, or I'm gonna shoot it and shoot you in the same time. I'm afraid you're gonna have to deal with a murder. Oh, oh, oh gentlemen, gentlemen, stop. Come on now. did pull out the guitar, but he didn't hand it over. He played the most beautiful, mesmerizing licks that anybody has ever heard on a guitar. Stranger? Stranger, are you, are you crying? Miss your mama. That's why you became bad, ain't it? Thank you. Well, why don't you come with us? Uh, the three of us are about to settle down in this town here. You tired me? Well, I, I guess so. Now that you're, uh, seem like you reformed yourself. Uh, all, right. all right. Mind if I hop in back of your wagon? No, we're you can hop in back and help us unload it. We're just settling right here. Oh, oh, you're selling right here. All right. But Cornelius, you were saying we should go to the next town. Is that what you were saying? You Boy. see, whenever Cornelius played his guitar, whatever was in his mind became true. Well, sometimes you got to just feel the feeling when you know it's right. And I don't think we felt that feeling about this town. You were both hesitant. You were both asking questions like, is this the place we should be? It shouldn't be, is this the place? It should be, this is the place. Oh, all right then, let's keep going. Let's keep going. All, all right, well, I'll see you later then. Jump, jump on, jump on right. if you want. <laughs> well, folks, I don't need to tell you, they went all the way to the West Coast. They kept picking up people who, either trying to rob them or join them, but what if Cornelius wanted them on, he played and they joined. Yeah, I reckon there must be, must be more than a thousand people in wagons behind us now. Darling, darling didn't I say I wanted to have a big family? Got one. Cornelius. Cornelius. Yes, sir. We're out of land. Look over this cliff. It's it's the ocean. Look, it's the it's it's pink, like your guitar. Oh, oh I'm, I'm gonna start unloading. Well, we gotta settle here, don't we, Cornelius? It was the exact spot Cornelius had been dreaming of. I'm gonna play one more lick. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? 
It seemed like he just up and evaporated into the pink sky. Cornelius? I told you. I told you, Leroy. He's a gift from God. Well, I never. We made it safe and sound. We're going to call this, we're going to name this town after him, darling, that we settled down here. What he, he told us one time his last name. He, didn't he say he was Cornelius San Francisco? Well, that's close enough. Yeah. Well, and close. that is the God's honest truth about how the city of San Francisco was formed. And they say on those beautiful, beautiful sunset nights when that pink comes across the ocean there, you can still hear Cornelius out there playing. He led them right to where they wanted and where he wanted. And he's looking over them to this day. So I, I just, I want y'all to think about that before you do any harm on my person. That just maybe, just maybe, I have brought you a gift that you do not recognize yet. And that my gift that I have given you of Doc Ernest P. Schnickel's guaranteed patented care all elixir will lead you to paradise. Now, I want you to ponder that for just a moment while I go outside and just move my wagon a little closer to the edge of town. Last words. Last words. What do you expect from a man who is about to be executed to say? A man whose only crime is trying to liberate his country from the French. Your compatriots freed your country from the Germans and you called them heroes. We tried to liberate Algeria, and you call us rebels, radicals, terrorists. You have killed a million of us, and I will join them today. We will sacrifice another million to get rid of you. Our story of liberation will be told for generations to come, just like we told stories of people before us. Those will be my last words. A story of liberation. What story would you like to hear? The Endless Night. The English Night. It's a story that takes place in Egypt, where two men of Egyptian origin, Mustafa and Ali, are sitting in a cafe discussing a plot, a plot to take over weapons from the British. Mustafa, I have found where the British store their weapons. You have? Yes. I, Ali, and you, Mustafa, we will have our revenge. Revenge. See, Ali and Mustafa had a cousin who was killed by the British. He was killed in bare daylight just because he was begging for bread. 
I will never forget the image of Kareem in my hands. Neither will I, Mustafa. And they will remember his name. It will be the last thing that they hear. By the way, this tea is delicious. It's very good. I think they've, they've gotten a new blend, I think. Listen, I am going to round up the others. At midnight, we will meet near the river. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye. I will leave guns there. At midnight, Ali and Mustafa met up near the barracks. They brought other men with them. Mustafa, I cannot hear your voice, but I know what you were saying, that the time for action is tonight. Is that right? That is right. Yes. All of us, men, women, we will revenge our brothers and sisters who have been killed unjustly by the British tonight. Each one of them had somebody who died by the hands of the British, and they knew that they needed to avenge their death. For my mother! Mom. Say her name. What was your mother's name? Jamila. For Jamila. Oh, me, my twin. My twin was killed. His name was Abdul. And you, sir, you, sir, in the corner. Me? Ah, yeah. It is my wife that was killed. Her name was Didi. They snuck into the barracks, slowly, crawling in the middle of the night. There was no moonlight, so it was pitch dark. They went to the weapons store. They saw a man, an English soldier, guarding it. Ali and Mustafa walk over. Mustafa, Mustafa, we've been practicing our English accents. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Greetings. Toodaloo. Greetings. There you are. Sorry. I was guarding. I couldn't quite hear you. Uh, uh, am I being replaced on guard duty early tonight? I'm afraid, yes. There's been a slight change of plans. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and they shout to Kareem as they killed him. Kareem, that's for Kareem. Kareem. Uh, that was quite impressive. I still, uh, we don't need to do English accents. Mustafa, that was almost too easy. Why is there only one guard in front of the door where all their arms are stored? I was actually gonna ask him more questions, but you killed him. Before they knew Before they it, they were surrounded by the British. Soldiers upon soldiers upon soldiers. Oh, God. Hundreds of them. Everyone, move in! 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 Move in!
and fire all of them at the soldiers. This will be an honorable death, Ali. Yes, we will die ourselves. We will kill many of them for, for Karim. On my count, all soldiers stop moving forward. We will entrap them inside in crossfire. One, two, three. <laughs> Hold your fire! Mustafa? Mustafa? I... Are you there? I'm going to light the armory. Here's the dynamite keg is here. I'm going to light it. Goodbye, my friend. This is for Kareem and all of our brothers and sisters. Battalion, retreat! Ali and Mustafa died that night. It was a night that was endless for the British. For they have killed 20 soldiers for every Egyptian man. And today I will die with them. And that is all I have to say. Pray! Armé! News flash, this just in. Unfortunately, our next narrator, the Explorer, will not be joining us tonight. The last time she was seen, she was heading towards Devil's Pass. We now present our alternate narrator. What? Yes, I'm Evelyn Lamore, love and advice columnist, syndicated in 27 different newspapers throughout the country. What, you're doing a feature article on me? <laughs> me? Uh, well, strictly off the record, but I can give advice, but I can't take it. Engaged four times, married five, divorced three. Oh, yeah. And, oh yeah, family troubles? Oh, I can make it so you're, you, you're back with your family having Christmas as if it's July 4th. Uh, my parents tried to disown me when I was four. Uh, can't blame them. Anyway, uh, money? Oh, I can't seem to hang on to this stuff. I don't know. Anyway, that's not really why you're here, right? <laughs> you want to know about the letters, right? Yes, that's what I thought. Um, see that stack there? Go ahead, pick out a letter. Go ahead, yeah, hand it to me and I'll read it to you. Uh, let's see, they like to give it uh, a little title every once in a while. They call this uh, Roses for the Groom. Roses for the Groom. Cincinnati. Dear Evelyn, <laughs> my name is Robbie. What a cute name. Isn't that a cute name? Robbie. <laughs> I'm 32 and I just got married. Oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Where is this going? Roses for the groom. I just got married to Cynthia and our wedding was superb. But here's my problem. 
I wonder what it could be, right? <laughs> this is my favorite part. Andy, honey, I'm home. Oh, sir, uh, she is upstairs waiting for you. Uh, you're one of those uh, salesmen, uh, what is it, vacuum cleaners, brushes? A butler, sir. A butler? Yes. Really? Yes. Cynthia hired a butler? Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. That's awfully kind of it. Do you have a name, sir? Or I don't want to just yes. call you butler. Oh, well, you can call me butler, sir, if, if that suits you. Uh, my, my name is Henry. Henry. Well, um, thank you for coming to work for us as a butler, Henry. Darling, I'm upstairs. Did you meet Henry, our new butler? I did, Cynthia. I was just having a lovely chat with him. Isn't he marvelous? I he certainly seems so. Very charming. Would you like a drink, sir? Um, yes. Uh, you know, I would love... The Fern Bar in New York has this Tom Collins they make that is out of this world, but I, I must. I will make it have... for you, sir. Thank you. Will you excuse me? Oh, of course. Evelyn, uh, he writes just to me. Evelyn, I should have known better when I got married that she gave me roses and that that would just be the start of her giving me things that I were outside of our means. I mean, the roses should have been an indication but then it was a butler. And after that, well, there were three other things that happened. Honey, Honey. Uh, yeah, oh, there you are. Huh? Uh, here I am. Uh, whose Rolls Royce is that in the driveway? Mm, look at the license plate whose name is on it. My God, that's, that's, that's my name. Robbie One, yeah. that's you. Because I, you're number one to me. Darling, that, well, that's very sweet of you, but it's it's too much. A uh, uh, Rolls Royce, uh, darling. The Edsel's fine, darling. I'm gonna put my finger right over your lips. Okay, darling. You, I'll put it back, darling. Mm -hmm. You underestimate yourself. How are you going to be a king unless you live like a king? Evelyn, that was just the first one. Then the second thing, you can't believe this. Guess what else, honey? Hi, I am your personal masseuse. Um, just for like an hour or so, I, I suppose that would be fine. I, I would love to relax a little bit. Oh, he'll go with you everywhere. He'll, anytime you want a massage, he'll be happy to give it to you, darling. How are you going to be a king if you're not relaxed? Uh -huh. Oh, But the third oh. thing, the third oh. thing took me over the edge, Ev Evelyn. I, I couldn't help myself. When she said this, I thought I'd lose my mind. Oh. The third thing, darling, is this. You're too good for me. And so... I want you to marry someone else. I, uh, here, I brought her with me. Is that, is that Diana Fabrisco, the, the famous movie star? Yes, yes I am Diana Fabrisco. It's Diana Fabrisco. She's already agreed to marry you, darling. Evelyn, I married you. I, but I, that was before you were a king, darling. Here, here's my wedding ring. Yeah. Are you going to Cynthia, perform? darling, I, I, uh, Diana, uh, would you give us a moment? You're, you're lovely. I love your films. Fine, I'll be in the hallway. Uh, Just ask, have... ask the butler to make you a drink. Yes, I will. Darling, what are you doing? What are you doing? I but, married but... you for better or for worse. Uh, you you got me a Rolls Royce. A Butler, and now you're, you're giving up our marriage so I can marry a famous, beautiful movie star? Darling, I, I thought you would understand. It, you're, you're, you're destined for greatness. You're destined to be better than any other man. And I'm just not good enough for you anymore. Unless you don't believe in yourself, darling. Is that what you're saying? Do I, you not believe in yourself? Well, I don't, I, I don't believe I'm destined to be a king. That's what I said to her. I wasn't destined to be a king. And then I said, well, I'll give it a try. I'll live with Diana. And 
I asked my wife where she would go. Uh, I'll, I've actually rented the house across the street, so I'll be close by. All right. Just in case you, she needs any help. All right, you. all right, but I'm not dissolving our marriage just yet. Well, just try it and see. I wanted to keep my options open. Evelyn, and so I did. I live with Diana, and well, uh, truthfully, it was quite fun. She is really a, a kick in the pants, if you you want to know. And uh, it was great. But every once in a while, I look out the window, and I could see my lovely wife staring at our house. It broke my heart. I was no more fun with Diana. I want a divorce. I'm, I'm sorry, Diana, I, I just, if I'm destined to be a king, I was only destined to be a king with Cynthia as my queen. I hope you understand. I, I'll still see your movies. Well, you better see him twice. I, I will. I promise. She left and I made my way over to my, my wife's house. Oh, I ran, I ran. Evelyn, I, I couldn't wait to see her. To see her face again. Let her know that I'm only a king if I'm with her. I knocked on the door. Cynthia! Come in. I told passed, Diana to go. You passed the test. This was, was all test. an elaborate test, darling. Oh, darling. I didn't think you really loved me. And so I, I bought a Rolls Royce and got, I got a masseuse and a butler and a, another movie star wife just to see if you would reject them all for me. And you did. I could never be a king without you, darling. For no. better or for worse, I could be the the king of just a bare living room and I would feel like the... Honey, yeah. you did pass the test, but in the meantime, the masseuse and I have started to see each other. I see. Evelyn. Evelyn, did I do the right thing telling Diana to go away? Should I have been more of a man and, and made sure the masseuse didn't go? For my wife, what should I have done? Tell me. I couldn't answer this question. I couldn't. That's the most cockamamie story I've ever heard. And I hear a lot of them, you know. Poor, poor man. Well, I, I guess if I had my druthers, I'd go back to the movie star. Sounds like it might be fun, but of course, not all my advice works out perfectly. Um, you, you said, you, you said you were from the Times? <laughs> oh, that's nice, yes, that's nice. Um, do you think you could give me a little time for a drink? Hey, hey, where are you going? Uh, wait, uh, oh, geez. I'm here to help you. And I promise you, if you give me a moment of your time, oh, whoa, whoa, baby, whoa, baby, come on, come on. Give me, just give me a second. And I promise you, while you're with me, you won't get caught. You see, <laughs> I know exactly where you're coming from. And I know how you can escape. Shit. Because I'm from the same plantation as you. And look at me now. I'm the best I ever did it and got away with it, young blood. You see, a slave without instruction is headed for self-destruction. And all you gotta do 
is take one step towards me and I'm going to take two towards you. Now you hear me out. You ain't going to get caught. I'm going to tell you how to get away. You see, yes, sir, indeed. You safe with me. Now you're a little emotional. You ain't going to hear me if I tell you what it is straight out flat. So how about this? And like I said, you won't get caught. Relax. As long as you're with me, you won't get caught. But to calm you down, cool your spirits. I'm going to tell you a story. It's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you my ways. And you're going to learn a little something. And the story is going to be called The 13th Motel. And this story, well, it's about a woman. A woman who, who was bigger than life. And she had dreams, big dreams. And she, um, she was willing to do anything to get them. Uh, yeah, uh, she was, she, she, she was willing to do what it takes. She had inspiration and motivation and that's right. And it, ch check it out. Her name was, uh, Darlene. I can buy that 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 horse and wagon as fast as any man, and I'll uh, I'll put down uh, uh, that few coins right there to prove that I can. Hmm. Two coins, you say? I'll That's see that right. action. All right, sir, ma'am. Uh, three coins each. That is in. All right. I'm gonna get in that that wagon and just show you how fast I can go. You see. Darlene was smarter than any human being that she had ever came across. She was more athletic and she just had all the traits that other people just couldn't understand. You want it fair and square, ma'am? I don't know how you do it, ma'am, but that's the fastest I ever seen anybody drive the ponies. Uh, I can run down to the the river faster than any man here. Who wants to take on? <laughs> Ma I've already you, lost uh, enough money today. Have you ever thought of of uh, being horse racing? You know, you're small, you're sail, you're pretty light. You might be able to make some money doing that. Now, uh, is there a lot of money in that? Yep. You know, good jockeys make a lot of money. You know, a lot of women, wealthy men won't have somebody ride their horses and if they win they win big they win thank big you. they pay you big thank you very much i'm gonna make my way to the the tracks right well i know you i know a gentleman who might be able to hire you as a jockey if you give me five percent of your uh, earnings you see darlene was never afraid she kept a switchblade, she kept a six shot, and she could fight just like the rest of them. So she was willing to take chances that most other people weren't willing to do and go places most other people weren't willing to go. Sure, I'll meet your friend. Well, uh, meet me tonight at the 13th Motel. All right. 7.30 p.m. I'll be there. So where is this surefire uh, jockey yours, huh? Well, sir, uh, she should be coming in any moment now. I hope her so. Is... I ain't got a lot of time here. It's almost 7.30. I told her to come 7.30. She's always here on the dot. Well, look, here she comes. Darlene, this is Miss, Mr. Whitmore. Call me Houston. Houston Whitmore. You probably heard of me. I own the last three Triple Crown winners. Most men that I know would take their hat off when they met a woman. I ain't most men. Well, I'm not most women, so we're even there. Mr. Whitmore, uh, Darlene is the best uh, athlete you'd ever see, and she's small. She win you a lot. 
And I know your last jockey passed away. I think you can find a good one in her. Yeah. Last jockey I had was attempting to ride Gold Thunder. Biggest damn stallion I ever seen, but nobody can get him on a quarter track. What they didn't know is that the night before or earlier before, Darlene had went and brushed Gold Thunder, fed Gold Thunder, spoke to Gold Thunder, and got to know Gold Thunder. Why don't you give me a chance, sir? I think I could ride your big horse. At least I'd like to try. Well, isn't that just forward of you? You know what? I do have a little bit of time after all. What do you say we go right down to the track? It's right down behind the motel here, and let's see if you can actually ride Gold Thunder. Let's put some money on that. All right. I like someone that's willing to back up what they got, and I like someone who's willing to put money in my pocket if they don't got what they think they got. Here's I'll all hold on to money. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. It's everything I own. Sure hey, about that, Darlene? You take my hundred too there, boy. I will make sure that this is all nice and fair. Let's get down to the track. Thunder's raring to go. Mm-hmm. So where do you come from, ma'am? I come from Cincinnati. <laughs> Big and horse you... riding town. Hmm? Darlene you... always gave a fake city where she was from because she was always on the move. She was actually from the Mississippi Delta, and she didn't want to tell people that because she never wanted to have people know her true identity. All right. Here it is. Bull Thunder. All settled up and ready for his nightly breezing. Why don't you take him out and show me what you think you can do? Lock me timer, sir. Absolutely. All right. All right. Maybe we should make sure the track doctor's close by, too, just in case. Already called them in, Mr. Whitmore. Good man. Before they could get the doctor or even see anything happen, Darlene was doing tricks and doing jumping over things and fences and razzling, dazzling, pizzazzling. She was doing all types of things. She even leaned on the side of the horse one time and shot a bottle off of a fence. They didn't even know there was a bottle on the fence. She was doing all types of things that they had never seen before. And Blue Thunder was just having the most amazing experience of its life as well. So not only did they impress the people, but they had a bomb that they never thought would happen. Wow. I forget the time, but boy, I ain't never seen Gold Thunder do nothing like that. Like it was some kind of pony at a circus. He still beat the best time ever, even doing all those tricks. How'd you gentlemen like that? Have you seen this horse ever do anything like that before? No? Ma'am, I ain't seen no horse do nothing ever like that. <laughs> you gonna hire me? And pay me my, first pay me my money and then hire me. Here you go, man. Thank you. Son, make sure she is set up with the nicest suite at that 13th hotel. I want her well taken care of and rested before the race tomorrow. Sure thing, sir. I'll go now talk maybe, to the innkeeper. Yeah. Now maybe you take your hat off for a lady? I'll see you in the morning, ma'am. I'll see you. You owe me 10 bucks, darling. So if you want to stop fearing massa, if you want to get your walking papers, 
chase women and dress like me, then all you got to do is sign right here, big fella. <laughs> For a small fee, Lucifer can set you free. Apologies. I neglected to activate my translator slash mouth synchronization device. Well, here we are, far from the prying eyes of the settlement. It's a beautiful view, isn't it, Captain Beverly? Lieutenant Leslie, how are you doing? Cat got your tongues? Ha 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 ha. That is the correct pleasantry for the situation, isn't it? I suppose that you both may have already surmised the reason that I have brought up here. We know that many of both of our species are opposed to the joint development of our space station but I believe it is the only way that we of both of our civilizations will survive. And I believe that you feel the same. And yet there is tension between us. I see the way you look at me. I know that you are intrigued by my anatomy. It makes you uncomfortable and why wouldn't it? You have never before encountered a being that is all genders, all sexualities. I am a new frontier. Ha 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 ha. I have determined that in order for us to fulfill our missions, we might undertake what you call making love. Do not be shy. You are also beautiful creatures in your own ways. <clears throat> Perhaps it will relax you if I tell you a story, yes? I will tell you a story that we often told each other about Earthlings in the time that we were observing you, but hadn't yet made contact. <laughs> yes, yes, I will do that. This story is called The Darkest Sun. Yes, it is a story, as I believe perhaps all stories are, of a family. There were three of them in a space module. Yes, just off of Earth. This is in the year 2116. Yes, there they were. It was one of the newer interplanetary models. And they were in it in order to see if there might be habitable planets anywhere near the solar system. Good morning, brother, sister. Good morning, brother, sister. Good morning, brother, brother. I have, I have a spelling of notes. Oh, please, brother, I insist you go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to mention I have uh, prepared some breakfast. Huh. Well, we, over breakfast, we can look at the scanning results I had from sector 283 stroke Z59. Oh, yes, 283 sector Z9 is really promising. And I shall re read the reports that have come in from the home office. That would be most pleasing, sister. Here you go, brother. Thank you. Here you go, sister. 
Thank you. Like many earthlings of that time, they were afraid to show any real emotion toward each other because they'd become disillusioned with humans and the fate of the earth. And that is the end of the home office report. Thank you. Very sister. efficient, sister. Thank you. I don't wish to, I don't wish to rock the boat, but I have noticed lately that you two speak at the same time. What is happening? It's just that I want to be more efficient. It takes more time for two people to, to speak than one person. So we combine our thoughts into one speech line. I see. Now it is working better. I guess you just needed more time to work on it. Anything new takes place, then we will know about it as one. When they slept, they slept each of them alone in their own sleeping compartments. They stared up at the white ceiling of the white room. They dreamed about what Earth must have been like before it became largely uninhabitable. And they dreamed about what it would be like to find a new Earth, not really believing that they ever would. Ha 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 Oh, oh, that is so beautiful. I think that is so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> The way the snow falls. What is that noise? There's a transmission. Do I hear a transmission? <coughs> I must go to the control center. I hope my siblings will meet me there. Go to the control center. I hope my siblings will meet me there. <coughs> Message awaiting. Message awaiting. Message awaiting. Brother, Brother, sister, sister, there is a message. There's a transmission. It is from the home office. They have, they have seen that we have been dreaming. Message awaiting, message awaiting. We, we shall play it. <laughs> Everything you see manifested before you is the result of a dream. End of transmission. They didn't know what that meant, of course, and they looked at each other in bewilderment. And then, and then, Sarah, for she was the smartest of the three, had a realization, of course, life is but a dream. Brothers, brother, brother, yes, sister. I have a realization. Do share, sister. We want to know. Please let us hold hands, for this will be. It will be something. Life is but a dream. Shaboom, shaboom. Yes. 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 Yes, life is but a dream. Oh my God, of course. Suddenly, they found themselves, as you may have already guessed, on planet Centauri X-14. Oh. Shaboom, Look. shaboom. Shaboom, shaboom. Yes, my friends, you have guessed it. These were the famous earthlings who believed in dreams again and in doing so made them reality. They were the first settlers on Centauri X-14. You see, there is snow and there, there is green plants and there is blue sky and there Look, 
They there looked are birds in the sky. They looked into each other's eyes and they smiled and they laughed and they hugged. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. I love you, brother. I love you, brother. <laughs> I love you, brother. I love you, sister. And soon they had sent word back to Earth and the few remaining humans there came to Centauri X-14. Well, well, you know the rest of the story, of course. It became the base planet from which all the other space exploration has taken place. And this, our capital city, Shaboom Shaboom, shall become a gateway to a new expansion of humanity throughout the universe, a peaceful, benign, passionate, dreamlike expansion. And the darkest sun is far, far away from us now and can do no harm. And with love, we shall lead, and this shall become our new home office. Never to wake. Only to dream. Well, that is our story. That was quite successful. The story relaxed us so much that we actually did it while I was telling the tale. You both performed some very unusual things with your forms. Before we return to the settlement, perhaps we have time for one more story. Joshua. Great. Thank you everyone for coming to the show. Um, yay. Yay. Uh, such sweet comments. Um, yay. We got through it. All those technical bits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you everyone. Uh, there are three more shows next week, uh, well, the th next three Saturdays. So uh, come and see, there'll be different narrators. And I think, Ken, that's the last time you're gonna do your narrator, right? Uh, yes, unless an unfortunate accident happens to a narrator in the future, so yeah. <laughs> so much fun. I and I, I want you to know, I'm guarding, I'm watching all of them closely to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay. Yeah. Great. Ken, that thing where you get shot and your hat flies off, uh, cracks me up every time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought talking about, I thought you were talking about when I got shot, that cracks you up, Tim. That does too. It's super funny. <laughs> yeah. 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 There were some really great uh, narrators tonight that were very, there was a lot of things going on. It was really exciting. Um, yeah. Anyway, if you have any questions, here's the time. Uh, Yes, Joshua is wonderful. He is. We can't do it without him, man. Yeah. No, we can't, Joshua. You can. <laughs> oh, we, we don't want throwing to. random stuff at Joshua. I'll be like, hey, can, can is there? Can we do drums and then like firing <laughs> shots? He's busy. Drums be a little faster. And tonight, uh, his board went out, so it was a real challenge before the show started. 
four times, Joshua. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was technically uh, things are, are interesting. Uh, there was a question about changing narrators. I did a different narrator last week. I played a, a gangster who had just been shot. Right. And I played a different narrator too. Um, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I am going to be in one more show and I will, uh, I'll probably, I don't know what narrator I'll do. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to stick with my narrator for next week. Yeah. Yeah. You're in next week's show. Larry, are you in next? No. I think I'm in the last week's show. May, right. That, yeah. that, that's a cool narrator, Larry. Mm -hmm. Very okay. much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, one thing I might actually, I was thinking about it. I might have to change narrators. I got another idea. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Well, that, uh, um, from somebody that just changed their narrator, uh, do it sooner than later. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, it's, it's uh, I had thought about changing it up, and then I, you know, Tim I had mentioned he was changing his, and then I, Regina mentioned I'm thinking of changing mine. And I went, I'm not, just so you know, we don't have the entire show because I was afraid like I would choose a character that was like identical to one of yours, and so we, were, you know, it was like let's add variety, and then I would like take it away. So and and I have fun playing the the snake oil salesman too. <laughs> uh yeah that hat thing i would i would protest if you wanted to change just because i want to see that hat thing again you see that thing? <laughs> so all all characters i have must have a hat shot off from now on so one of the reasons i changed though was because there was no romance mm. yeah because we didn't know what tim's was going to be like and there and everything else was pretty adventurous i mean uh you know the western and then the, uh, the you know the Middle Eastern and then, you know, cross everything just was very adventure. So I thought um, not play another adventure character. The alien app um, is snap camera. Um, and you have to, it's a little convoluted to use it when you're in a Zoom show, but it's, it's possible. Uh, Karen last night, play, she found a character y'all, did you see it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you were in it. The, the, that fairy character, how cool mm -hmm. was that? It was um, really yeah, so you can switch in and out of those characters. Um, yeah, snap camera, not Snapchat. I think it's actually, I think it was invented by the people who did Snapchat. Oh, right. But it is called yeah. snap camera, yeah. Okay. I just wanna say that Eve uh, just said it played really great. Um, and she did this uh, format this past summer, we did the first time we did it um, as a class, and Eve was a uh, was a very stern uh, house housekeeper, kind of like um, oh, Rebecca the, from the book Rebecca. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was great. So thank you, Eve. That means a lot to me that you <laughs> gothic ghost, another ghost. Yeah. Robin asks, um, did we ever do any period research for your show? Tim? Joshua said, yes, I did. Yes, I looked into the future. Uh, oh. We do, we, def we, de we, we definitely do. Wouldn't you agree, everybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. I uh, actually, the, uh, the comments that I had, and thank you, my ensemble, for like being the angry mob shouting at me. I did research several different things of finding like what were insults in the late 1800s. Um, so, I mean, you know, I'm, I enjoy that stuff too, because I learn things. And so I'm, I'm a complete and utter research geek when it comes to characters and, you know, what I can pull in that's authentic like that. And Larry, isn't that Crossroads, the actual Crossroads from, isn't it? Yes. I would like to thank Ken for helping me find this. Um, uh, I would also say rest in peace dmx you know mm -hmm. he was uh, x crossroads mm -hmm. um but yeah so for people who aren't familiar with it robert johnson it's a famous blues story about a man who disappeared for several years and came back being one of the best guitar player and jazz you know i mean a uh, blues uh, singer and of all time or something like that and it's, it's they used to say it's supposedly he sold his soul at the crossroads to like a very charismatic man who was the devil in disguise or the devil's messenger or something like that. The devil's advocate. 
that show is on Netflix, The Crossroads? It's a documentary about, it's a true story. Yeah. So it's a documentary about Robert Johnson. Yeah, Devil at the Crossroads or that something like cool. that. That was cool. That was good. Yeah, I, I did I did research for my my character. <laughs> the Algerian war. Like there was a there was a debate going on. Was that the word terrorist used at that time? And I did like a lot of research into it. I was like, nope, it is actually used. <laughs> I did research too on that. It's like, yeah. is it yeah, it was. I was wondering, like insurgent, remember, remember in Vietnam, the United States used the word insurgent. Insurgent, yeah. The, yeah. Cat Williams has a very funny joke about that. He is like the bit is so good about insurgents. It's good. Oh, cool. In case anybody wants to laugh. <laughs> insurgents. Every, every now and then. Uh, yeah. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for coming. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And try to catch the other ones. Well, yeah, there'll be uh, different narrators next week. And yeah, three different narrators. Thank well, you. In two for weeks, coming. we have the original cast, right? Yeah, and the twenty fourth, we'll have um, the original cast from yeah. thirty three years ago. So wow, that <laughs> very cool. It, it all started when you were two. Yeah, <laughs> Michael McShane, Brian well, Lowe. and when I wasn't born. <laughs> <laughs> for real. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you Good so night, much. Everybody. Thank you. Good night.